get lost in Savannah. Everybody got their demons. Hit them, but you can't see them. Hit them, but you can't leave them. Ignited at the four seasons. Late night is for a reason. Get lost in lost in Hello, and welcome back to another one. Um, in this video, we'll be creating this um, really dynamic uh, electric or lightning effect uh, inside Blender. And uh, really excited for this one. I really like how these results came out. There are already a number of uh, lightning tutorials out there, but um, most that I've seen use, uh, you have to actually model the mesh that forms the, the bolts of the lightning. But in this approach, we'll actually be using uh, Blender's curves. And using curves just opens up a whole new way of working with uh, this kind of effect that allows you to do uh, a lot of cool stuff with the settings that Blender has uh, with its curves. Now there's two ways that I know of that you could go about this. And one, you could create the curves right inside Blender and you could actually use an add-on to make that process a lot easier. And two, you could use uh, curves or vectors that were created in an external software like say Inkscape or Illustrator and then import that into Blender and use that. So let's just jump into Blender and see what can happen. So we'll begin by, okay, maybe we'll just disable the cube from the viewport for today. I think we'll be fine as long as we don't hear any boss music. So you'll have to go to Blender's preferences and enable an add-on called IVGen. And this add-on was made for creating um, those kinds of vines that crawl and climb on surfaces. But it turns out it's really handy for doing what we want to do. Because um, those patterns that the vines form are almost like pretty close to uh, what we want to create the branching of the electricity. So after enabling the add-on, you'll find it in the end panel on the right side. And you can play around with it and tweak the settings to see uh, what, what, what works for you. But I've found that the default setting is really okay for what I'm going for. But you can just play around with it and see what, what you can come up with because it's really flexible and it can give just totally different results when you just play with the numbers. Since you don't need the leaves, you can set it so that it doesn't produce leaves or just delete them. And you'll see that it gives you a pattern that already looks good. It looks really close to what electricity would look like. It's erratic, it's random, and it looks really nice. So already half your job is, is done. Now you just have to make it behave close to what electricity would, be, would behave. So we're going to use the wave modifier to achieve this. And the reason I find uh, the wave modifier so beautiful for this effect is that you don't even have to animate any values and already you have movement going on. So it really minimizes the work that we're going to do down the line when we want now to animate all this, uh, this effect. So it really helps to keep uh, the, this workflow very procedural. And when we want to change things down the line, there are really few things that have actual keyframes animating the, the whole thing. So I'll use a stack of wave modifiers. I'll use two of them. And the first one is going to just be displacing uh, this, uh, the, the whole pattern in like a wavy form. And there's really no one-size-fits-all solution for the numbers that you put in here. It, it really all depends on your specific scene, the size of the things in your scene. And so you have to play around and find the values that work for you. But the ones that I've had to play with most are these main ones and the speed and uh, time. I'll quickly add a material so that I can better see how it's coming along. And it's a very simple material, just an emission. That's, and I'll also turn on the bloom because this it really goes a long way in making this effect look really nice. And I'll turn up the brightness so that I have just enough of that halo around the core. And while still having that core uh, look um, uh, bright white. 
and that's that's just it for that now when i found uh values that i like how they look i'll then add a uh, texture to just randomize because it it looks too uniform uh, as it is so i'll just add a texture uh, and use that to just randomize how the waves go through the whole pattern and then with the first modifier done i'll add a second wave modifier and this time i want to randomize the thickness of the bolts of lightning so i'll add a second wave modifier and then i'll check this uh, along normal so that the wave modifier will be displacing the surface of the bolts along their normals and this will cause it to just give it some variation in in the thickness and then again i'll also under texture add another texture to just randomize because it look to it looks kind of weird when all these uh, uh thick stuff propagating through the shapes so yeah so as you can see we're almost done with the effect and with all that we've done so far you can select the curve you can rotate it you can scale it you can transform it and all that we've done will remain intact because of how procedural this workflow is and the only values that we're going to animate are under blender's curve options under geometry the uh, and a bevel the bevel start and end of the curves and these are what we're going to use to get the bolts to grow and disappear for what i'm going for i found that eight frames are just long enough that you'll get to see the profile of the bolts and all the things that are happening in there and just short enough to give you that illusion of that speed of how how the bolts are moving so just within eight frames i'll animate the bolts appearing and disappearing and as it disappears i'll give it just a few more frames on the screen so that you can just have enough time to see these patterns uh, disappear in different paths and it gives just this feeling of dispersion this dispersion of energy as the as the branches are disappearing in different directions Now, an alternative to this workflow that we just saw, instead of using uh, IvyGen to generate these curves, you can use curves that were created in a vector illustration program like Inkscape or Illustrator. And here I have this, this curve that was made in Inkscape that's already in the pattern of a lightning bolt. And then I'll bring that into Blender. But the only difference with, between this and the previous one is that because these shapes are drawn these curves form a complete loop which when you give it a, a thickness you'll see how it forms these double lines which we don't want to see in the lightning bolts so what i'll do to fix that is i'll just find these corners where uh, the bolts are, are turning and then i'll select a few of these places uh, in the shape and then I'll just press X and delete segments. This will make it so that uh, the shape is no longer formed by loops. So now it will have a place where when you animate the bevel, it has a place where to start and where to finish. And an advantage of this method is that because um, with the previous one, you'll see how the curves are single curves going more or less in a straight line. But here, one of just one curve will will branch out in in very varied forms which will give you already that variation just baked into the shape of the curve itself and then you can then use uh blender's tools to tweak and just tweak the shape of how you want the curve to move so i've made available on my gumroad you can buy uh, a pack of such uh, curves of these lightning patterns for a dollar there's 20 of them in the car in the in the package you can download and use that if you 
if you want, but alternatively, you can still use uh, the add on. So, the reason why I really like this workflow of using curves to make this effect is because of the nature of how curves are and how malleable curves are. Uh, if you enable proportional editing, you can see how I'm bending and turning and twisting the curves to direct how I want it to move, where I want it to come from. If I want it to turn around a model, you can see how I'm just turning it and bending it around uh, this model. And because of how electricity is, it doesn't have, um, this kind of effect doesn't have a form that you, you have that fear of losing it. You have that freedom to just twist and turn and just really direct how it looks. And one more thing that you can do with this that I really like is how curves also take the um, shrink wrap modifier. So on top of all that we've already done, you can use a shrink wrap modifier to get this electricity to look like it's moving on top of the surface of your model. So using these two in combination, just turning it and directing uh, how you want it to move, and then on top of that using the shrink wrap modifier to kind of stick it to the surface of an object, it really, it's, I find it's a really cool workflow and it can give you just really nice and cool looking results. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really had fun with this one. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, there are a few more videos coming down the line. I know you are really going to enjoy them. And yeah, stay tuned and see you in the next one. Ciao.